wasn't prepared to say anything, but it's really a great honor because although I left Hungary in 1956 when I was 18 years old, and even since I was eight years old, I was always dreaming of making movies, but I couldn't get, couldn't become an electrician at the Hungarian studio. I wasn't allowed to go to school after age 13 because my father was imprisoned by the communist insane lunacy and they said he was an American spy and he wasn't, he was in prison for five years and I couldn't do anything except to dream and look through the keyhole in our building. We had a villa which was taken away and we're living in an apartment which was divided into four other families and my brother had died and my father was in prison and my mother was working pressing buttons in a plastics factory and I wasn't allowed to do anything except I was allowed to dream and that's when this mania developed about making movies and uh, I had an aunt of mine who was a very famous opera singer ironically in the West and for my eighth birthday she gave me a 35 millimeter hand crank projector which is the most insane gift to give to a kid in starving Hungary at the time, you know. And there it started, me projecting and closing the windows and this film, and then having seen three films in Hungary, and in Hungary after 1948, English and French speaking or foreign movies were forbidden, nothing except Russian movies, mostly propaganda movies. And uh, there was one film, the first film I saw, and it had to be 1948, was Laurence Olivier's Hamlet, before the Iron Curtain completely came down. And after that, there was a wonderful French film uh, with Gerard Philippe called Fanfan la Tulipe. <laughs> and then after that, there was an incredible Hungarian movie called Valahol Eru Baba, which means somewhere in Europe and between those three things completely blew me away. And many years later at a party here in Hollywood, we were having dinner and Costa Gravas, this wonderful, legendary uh, Greek director who made his life in France. He was talking, somebody asked us, well, what is it what made you want to be a director? And Costa started talking, I can't remember, but it was somewhere in the country and young boys in the war, they were running and they were orphaned boys going to a castle. And I said it was called somewhere in Europe. And I said, oh my God, you're right. And then I got a copy through the Hungarian, because you can get anything in LA. There is a, was, it's a Hungarian uh, place where you can get DVDs at that time. Oh. And so I got this bloody DVD and I sent it to Costa in Paris and he went crazy when he screened the film. But anyhow, so the whole dream started out in Hungary. And when I escaped with two friends of mine in 1956 in the middle of the revolution, I wasn't, if I was going to get killed, I wasn't going to stay in Hungary anymore because I knew I had no future. So we left, the three of us, and by, by some miracle we got out overnight and my two friends went to Paris and I went to London because this aunt who gave me that projector lived in London and she was working with Benjamin Britten at the time and that, she somehow fixed me up and within two weeks I was an, an apprentice in some studios, ABPC studios in England and that's, that's how it all started being, you know, sweeping the floor and doing whatever it didn't matter what it was because whatever I was doing I had to really make it happen. So they will say, but that kid is really okay, but why don't we do so and so? So it started, my life began. And we seen that was in 1956. And by some miracle in 1963, I went on the contract to Universal and, and Barbara is here and it was her husband's doing, uh, John Cohn. And he recommended me to this American Universal Studios. They wanted to find a young kid who was talented and all that. I went on the seven-year contract, and two weeks later, I was working as an assistant director with Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton and Orson Welles and Margaret Rutherford in a movie in MGM London called VIPs. 
And I had to go to the producer saying, I'm sorry, but I need to quit because I need to go. I got this chance. <laughs> and they threw a big party, Richard and Elizabeth said, the kid gets his big break, he's going to Hollywood, you know. And I turned up here in 1963. And I was here for three, four years. And then I went back to London working for them there. And then they wanted me to come back again and pick up the next year. Each year they had to pick up an option. And I, by then I found this incredible book and this incredible actress who nobody knew in England, but they did from the theater, which was Glenda Jackson. And I said, I'm not coming back because I'm going to make my first movie. And that was in 1968. And Sid Scheinberg, who was running the studio, said, Peter, you are making a terrible mistake, you know. And I said, Sidney, I love you all, but I'm not coming back. I'm going to make my movies from now on. And I stayed in London, and I started my movie career. And the guy who got the job, which was a vacant job at Universal, was Spielberg. And he walked in, and he was observing and driving everybody crazy about directing. <laughs> And that's what happened, you know, but you never know what would have happened had I stayed and whatever, it doesn't matter. But what I want to say is that really my life, my first part of my life is Hungary. And the first time I didn't go back for 30 years until the day I escaped. And my wife, Julia, at the time said tomorrow, I booked the ticket and we're going from Paris to Budapest, you know. And it was still under communism. And when the pilot said, we just crossed over from Austria to Hungary. I broke down. <laughs> and Julia said, that's why I want to be with you, because I want to dare to be picked to pick you up, you know, because I know you're going to be in pieces. And I went, and I didn't want to leave after two days, and Julia said, you're not staying, you're coming with me to Rome, you know? <laughs> and so what I want to say, so that's Hungary, you know, and. Every time I go back, which is quite often, and I only made one movie there, um, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, because I always I had this friend of mine, the one I escaped with, he was a wonderful actor. His name is Peter Barconi. And he never wanted to act anymore in his life, unless it was in Hungarian. So he became a French literature professor. He went to the Sorbonne and everywhere in the world. And uh, he lives in Boston now. And when I did the Hunchback of Notre Dame, I said, Peter, you got to come back because the first time we would be together again since 1956. And Mandy Potemkin, everybody said, well, he's got to be in the movie, he's got to be, and Peter didn't want to be. And so finally we gave him a two-line part <laughs> as an extra, and he was in it. But what's very important, what I want to say is that every time I go back, it's the minute the aeroplane door opens and the smell hits you, this air of Budapest, you know. And it's undescribable unless you are Hungarian. It's probably like that with everybody else when you return to where you had come from at the beginning of your life. And it's incredible because you are back home again, you know. And there's no words to describe that, what it really means, you know. But then I spent the next 35 years in England and I so fell in love with England that I consider myself English. And on one of my movies, won the best whatever, and uh, the craze film. And Richard Attenborough, who's now passed away, gave me the award together with John Mills. And all our friends at the British Film Institute were there. And I made this, like, now you're making an insane speech, because I never prepare anything, you know. <laughs> and I said, you know, uh, I am more English than all of you put together. And, and there was this shock silence in the room, and Jeremy Thomas, and you know Richard, everybody who was there, and he said he's finally gone insane. <laughs> but it's Hungary, England, and then I came to America, '63, and I went back, and so these three countries are my homes, and I don't belong anywhere really. But if I belong anywhere, it's Hungary. But then I'm more English than the English are, I think. <laughs> And uh, it's, you know, you, you become a gypsy in the world. And I just pack up the bag, close my place, and travel, whatever, make a film, or don't make a film. And as you say in the paper, the most important thing in this crazy, it's not, it's not film business doesn't exist. It's not a business. You have to be insane to be in it, because it's an obsession, you know? And unless you're obsessed, you 
shouldn't be in it because it's not about making money and it's not about fame, but it is about doing something which you dream of and you make a movie about, you know, and that's what life is about. And that's what I've been trying to do all my life. And it's not over yet, you know. <laughs> and that's it. And thank you for coming and for the consulate and everybody who organized this, both of you. Uh, it's, it's, it's really wonderful because I belong to Hungary. At the end, at the bottom line, that's what it is. And I'll never be anybody else except this crazy Hungarian who, even in Hungarian, has an English accent, and in English I have a Hungarian accent. So you figure that out. So it's hopeless, you know. But that's what it is. Thank you for coming.